Good morning, everybody. Jason Rowan here. Compass wanted to introduce Michael Banks with Guaranteed Rate. Hello, how are you? Here at March 5th at the Compass HQ on Lincoln Ave. So wanted to get started with Mr. Banks here and, and talk through a couple of questions on the financing side. Uh, we've, got a lot of this, we've worked with a lot of buyers before over the years and uh, wanted to kind of run through some of the simple questions that most people have. So Michael, like, you know, I guess one of the, you know, we can, we can go high level on this too, but I think one of the, one of the early stage questions I think a lot of buyers get is, you know, what's my down payment? Yep. What does that threshold look like? And then, you know, tie into that PMI, if you will, and kind of explain yeah. that through the process. Yeah, so very good question, very common question. So, so down payment, everyone thinks that you know, historically you need 20% down, yep. right? That's like the benchmark. Everyone has that in their minds. But with prices here in Chicago, Five hundred thousand dollar place, you need a hundred grand, yeah. right? And you know, if you're if you're out of college, if you're you know first couple jobs, it, it's really hard to have accumulated that much money cash to then put down. So very commonly, um, you know, five percent down is an option, ten percent, fifteen, twenty, or more. But the the thing about the PMI is that everyone thinks it's a million dollars. It used to be almost you know prohibitive back in the day. Now you know you buy a four or five hundred thousand dollar place, put five or ten percent down, your PMI might be like eighty bucks. Yeah. You know, hundred bucks, and that's in place of another fifty grand, seventy-five grand. So if you uh, you know picture a teeter totter at the park or something like that, you have PMI of like eighty dollars, and then like seventy-five thousand bucks cash. It's uh, it's it's not as as bad as it used to be. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, that's 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 definitely lower impact. Yeah, exactly. Well you get in the house, your payments aren't blowing up, and you're not you're not draining every dollar of cash you have. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's that's good. And and, and from that side. You know, tie in one of the questions early on is once you're under contract, you know, from from the questions I get, which I push off to you, yeah. is what do I need to bring to closing? Like, yeah. I mean, what's all inside of that number, and how are those broke down, and, and, and what is that number, and how do I get it there? Kind of. Thing? Yeah. So when when I get asked about closing costs, it's a very common question very early on. Michael, what are the closing costs, and so on? Like, how much on top of my down payment do I need to prepare for? So here in Chicago, in Chicago proper, we usually estimate it's around 2% of the purchase price. Uh, I tell everyone, it always comes in lower, but if you, if you mentally prepare for 2%, then you'll be happy at the closing, all right? The, the closing cost, so let's say it's a $400,000 place. 2% is eight grand. So out of that number, you know, almost six of it, if not more, is made up of only two categories, right? You have the Mr. and Mrs. Cook County sales tax, <laughs> that mm -hmm. is a huge chunk. And that's just an equation. That's just, um, it's dollars per thousand of your price, right? So if you pay in cash, you pay it. If you use a bank, you pay it. You know, whatever you do, it's gonna be there. And then the second big cost is the seller's title company, all right? So here in Illinois, it's customary that the seller's side, their attorney chooses, you know, Chicago title, Fidelity, Nation, whatever it is. And on that price point, that's gonna be another probably three grand, right? So out of $8,000 of closing costs estimated, you know, probably six or so, is gone in just two categories. That's before you borrowed a dollar, mm -hmm. you know? So the, the other ones are kind of dink and dunk, you know, your attorneys could be, you know, 600 bucks, your appraisal's 350 bucks, uh, inspection, little little things. But I always just say the, the two lion's share costs are out of our control, it's gonna be there, don't worry about it, and just, just prepare for 2%, but it'll be less and you'll be happy. Now, does that carry true with new construction as well, on the buy side? Yes, so so with new construction, again, the, the transfer tax is gonna be based on the purchase price. That's always gonna be there. Title company, always gonna be there. Uh, there there's a couple nuances with new construction where on, a, on an existing property, you get, you get some credits from property taxes. Okay, here in Illinois, we pay our taxes in arrears. It goes, this goes back to the Great Depression. It's a very goofy rule. Uh, not all states do that. So on existing properties, you get a, a minus or a subtraction at the closing for property taxes, okay? With new construction, there is no minus. There, there's no property taxes, right? It was a pile of dirt or you know, a big plot of land. So that, that increases their cash to close a little bit, but uh, as long as you go up front into it knowing that and they prepare, then it's not a surprise. And sticking with new construction, because I know we've run into, I, we've done a lot of it together, and I, I know another question that I didn't think of, uh, but let's talk about the first in on, on a yeah. project. You know, there's three or four condos, six condos, whatever the the the, uh, the unit count is. What does that look like from a, to the, to the buyer in terms of what they can and can't do? Yeah, very 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 good and common question. Uh, with, with how much building is going on, if you have a you know a four unit building, six, eight, ten, whatever it might be, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. And they give all the money to everybody, right? Everybody wants their loans. So the very first purchase in a building, unfortunately, is the, is the most risky, right? What if the builders don't sell out? 
What if they go bankrupt? What if they just, just skip town? Whatever it might be. So the very first unit in there is viewed as riskier by lenders. Uh, so Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, they don't want to do that. Okay. There's ways, uh, there's ways to kind of get around that based on the, the project, we call it a project, the project size. So like if it's, if it's a four unit, not to get nerdy here, if it's a four unit, get nerdy. Uh, yeah. if it's a four unit building or lower, then we do care if you're first then. Because there's certain documents that, that, that we're not going to ask for and no one's going to see, so it doesn't matter. Okay. But then when, if the building's five, six plus and so on, uh, the, the first in Fannie and Freddie don't want it. Uh, but here in Chicago, because there is so much of that, you know, whenever there's an appetite for something, someone's going to fill that gap, right? Mm -hmm. So then there's tons of investors that we work with, and, and most banks can you know, have this ability where they, they can do the first in. It's just, again, a couple little nuances on the financing. But, um, but yeah, huge buildings. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac do not want to be the number one. They'll be two and beyond. They don't want to be number one. Um, smaller projects like four-story walk-ups or less, uh, it's all good. But you can service either one. We can do, uh, oh yeah, easy. like I said, we're in Chicago. We're yeah. one of the most like condo-dense cities in the country. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and especially with all this building. So yeah, you, you have to be able to accommodate the, the different situations. How does it, and I, we've, we've never encountered this, but how does it work on like a, a new high-rise downtown where there's, call it 65 new units, yeah. and it's pre-construction? Like there is literally a parcel of land there with nothing moved. There's not a foundation. There's nothing. No infrastructure has been laid for this new construction. They're doing pre-construction sales. Yep. How do those work? Similar or what's different? Uh, yes. So very, again, very similar. Um, typically, you know, because of the time that you'd go under contract on, in that situation, and then when you're actually, you know, getting the keys to your place, there's so much time. Yeah. And the, the common pattern is that a ton more units will go under sale. Yeah. Right? So what the investors want to see is... You know, if there's 65 units, for example, they want to see, okay, we've had 15 close and 20 under contract. We are, or whatever the metrics are as time goes on. But you, you just start the financing just like normal, right? Okay. Uh, it's, again, you have so much time for other dominoes to fall in your favor. Uh, so, so yeah, you, you know, it's, it's credit income assets. You get that stuff in, get them going. Uh, typically they have deposits, you know, upgrades. Uh, New construction, the price starts like this, and we always know that it does that, so there's changes. But, you know, again, as we get closer to the finish line, then it's more of like, okay, now where are we? In the past six months, have more units closed or sold, have more units gone under contract, et cetera, and then we, we just kind of evaluate the numbers. And I knew this was gonna work this way. I knew you were gonna start talking about these. I was gonna think about 10 other options. Yeah, of course. Questions. But I, you mentioned time, and, yeah. I, and I just thought about another, another question that people ask a lot is rate lock. Do yeah. You, what, how do we, when do we, should we, how, what, all that goes yeah. into it. Let's talk about that timing. Yeah, so, so the, the, the data shows us nationwide. So 30 and 45 days are like the most common lock periods in the country, right? After that, you know, it typically goes 60, 75, 90, 120, and so on. Uh, the, the longer you lock the money, the more expensive it is, okay? If, I, if, if you and I are identical twins, uh, very ge handsome gentleman here, uh, <laughs> if we're identical twins, everything's the same, find the same place. If I lock my money for 30 days, and you lock your money for 120 days, way out into the unknown future. My money is less expensive, it's less risky, because we, we kind of know what's going on, right? It's, it's built into the cake, whatever's going on. Four months out, who knows, right? Yeah. There might be Fed meetings, there might be an election where this year, there might be all sorts of things that'll happen, so the bank's like, the price of the money's gonna be a little different, right? It's kind of the opposite of uh, like plane tickets. You know, if, you, if we bought plane tickets to go to Vegas, yeah. six months out, it's like 500 bucks. Yeah. If we did it six hours out, it'd be like 5,000 yeah. bucks. You know what I mean? So it, it's kind of the inverse of that. But typically, 30, 45 days are very common. 60 happens, but they're, they're not too many, at least in my experience. 75, 90, 120, um, you know, especially new construction, you like it for 120 days, we all know the closing dates, man, you know, you gotta put that in light pencil. That ain't, you know, the, yes. the, the, the times that it goes over that date, so then you lock it for 120, if it goes beyond it, it it's, it's a situation, you know? Yeah. Gotcha, that's good stuff, uh, really good stuff. I, I, I wanted to, uh... You know, obviously we've closed a lot of deals together, and uh, it's uh, it, it's it's always ref you know uh, I, I guess refreshing to know that y y you're the guy I lean on for the, for my buyer clients to to uh, to walk down the aisle with on their home purchase. But I, you know, it's always interesting. When I was at a closing yesterday, I, and I wanted to bring this up to you because I every time I close a deal and you're not there, I, some <laughs> shit always goes wrong, or it's just it, I'm not used to it taking place like this. Right, right, right. So I'm at a closing, we're at the table. Um, and it's going to lead into the team yeah. uh, conversation that I wanted to have with you. Um, the lender shows up late. You know, the, 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 the deal isn't funded yet. The lender leaves, mm. which, you know, I'm kind of thinking that's your one job to make sure that it kind of gets pushed across the finish line. It's a grand finale, man. And you're just, you're just leaving the huddle. 
Yeah. Okay, you're leaving the you're walking away from the team on the one yard line, and we guess it's gonna happen, and it did. But I, the nine o'clock closing that funded at twelve fifteen. Oof. Listen, you, buyer left. I mean, it's just. So I'm sitting there thinking, I'm like, this is why I don't do this. This yeah. is why I don't use you. This is why I won't use you. This is why I use banks. I joke with everybody. Listen, I, I, I talk fast. I get up. I drink a ton of coffee a day. I want to work efficiently. Go home and play with my kids, right? Yeah. My closings, knock on wood, are like 30 minutes of chit chat and coffee yeah, and donuts. You know, like, like there's no reason that if, uh, you know, forewarned is forearmed. If you can go into the closing and have everything prepared, right, do it a little ahead of time, get in there, sign some papers, you're done. I mean, yeah. it, it, it's not that hard. You know, people unfortunately sometimes overcomplicate things, you know, but yeah, yeah hours and hours of not funding and then leaving, that's, uh, that's a tough one, man. That's, uh, yeah, it is. That's yeah. That's it. Was it happens? It but. was painful. <laughs> um, but which which also leads me to the point of saying, you know, we work with a lot of clients, uh, you know, who have bought places and then sold and bought new places. Yep. Uh, which which obviously shows our, our runway of working together. And I and I, I think that you know that speaks to a, any buyer, new home buyer, or even if you're not a new home buyer, but when you engage a broker to help you with your real estate assets. I think it's uh, in, imperative, unless you have a super tight relationship with an attorney or a lender that you've got you know, a, a lot of business that you've done in the past with, some right. history with, right. I understand that relationship, but if you don't, it is super helpful for all parties involved to use the broker and let that broker dictate the lender and the attorney that that, that, that person uses to get you through the finish line because right. those people work together seamlessly. Yeah, They've been to the closing table dozens if not hundreds of times they know exactly how to communicate and get the deal done which is the most important thing that buyers doing anyway is getting to the closing table and push it through the touchdown so that that i mean it's just it's the consistency and when you see and, and one it takes one person to fumble i mean you, yeah you know i i've got how many people that we've worked together that know an attorney yeah I mean, oh yeah the attorneys, my, my, my cousin's uncle does um now practice in, in nebraska for, right you know whatever yeah, yeah he's gonna help me yeah yeah is he, <laughs> is he gonna help you like we know that how that's gonna work I'm out i'm saving a hundred dollars yeah. yeah and so I, I i can't stress enough how important it is to you know have all parties know one another and and have some history with working with one another it just makes it so much easier and that's what you want you don't want a headache i mean there's so much shit that can go wrong yeah in a deal to have something fumble on the one yard line or your lender not be there when it's not funded and no idea how to, you know, communicate that to the buyer and, you know, the attorneys from Nebraska and closing on yeah. the of Chicago yeah, yeah. and leaning on the, the sales attorney for guidance. Like yeah. it, it becomes <laughs> messy. So yeah. it's, 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 uh, it's, you know, best course of action to have a team involved, I think is a great, great option. So. As far as the consistency and to use a sports analogy, which are usually pretty easy to, to, to digest, but we'll use the Patriots, right? You the same coach, the, the, the New England Patriots. Oh, no, I'm not that. a fan, but anyways, <laughs> same coach, same quarterback, similar offensive line, you know, OCs, all these different things, and and look at the results. Yeah. You have other teams. I'll use the Bears. We're here. You got a new this, a new that. All these, all this change and, and and chaos. And there's no like, hey, I know I know how you do things. I know how you do things, and you whatever. And there's like this trust factor. You know what yeah. I mean? And and when you have uh, a part of the team that's super important that that you don't know, then it's like okay. Typically, when this situation arises, I know how Jason will handle it. I know how Michael will handle it, how this attorney will handle it, and so on. When we even have it, then it's like, do I call an ask? Do I, am I bugging? Like, what is this? It's like double work. It's just, it's unnecessary. Yeah. It's, it, it's the, the more consistency you can have, the better outcome you'll have. It's that simple. 100% agree. That's, it's, uh, yeah. And we've seen it work and we've seen it fumble. I mean, we'd have to pick up some messes before anyway. That's just the way it is. But, uh, hey. but, then, but then, so here's, uh, that, that's funny you say that. With, uh, I always use like a restaurant analogy, okay? Whatever your face, favorite restaurant is, you go there four or five times, you have an amazing meal, right? Yeah. You go there 500 times, you're gonna probably have a bad meal or two, right? Yeah. But they, they've built up the good stock over time to where just mathematically, the law of average, you're gonna have a bad experience or bad clothes or something's gonna go on. But then at least we know it's like, hey, listen, um, you know, these events happen out of anyone's control. It's part of life. It's just, it's bound to happen eventually. Yeah. Uh, we'll solve it like adults and then we'll move on. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this has been great. Um, what questions do you have for me? Anything that I didn't ask you to prepare anything or, or no? Yeah, no, 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 no. I, I mean, if you have any questions at all, but I, <laughs> I want to give you some airtime. Obviously, you are new to the guaranteed rate team. Which yes, yeah. You see that the swag? You got you like so, that? It's like day like three or four. I've or been there two, or... for you know seventy hours. Let's call it. Yeah. You know, I uh, I don't even know where the bathroom is. You know, in the so, building. So yeah. it's uh, it's been an amazing change. I appreciate you you mentioning that. Absolutely. It was something where. Um, just, you know, my, my prior company was absolutely amazing, so nothing bad to say about that. But the change, you know, talking with 
uh, my wife and talking with um, you know you you were you know kind of earlier on this process as far as you know bouncing things off you and so on. It yeah. just seemed like uh, you know the the juice was worth the squeeze of making the change. Hundred percent. But, uh, but yeah, since then, man, it's it's been a great experience so far. Again, obviously, it's only been a few days, but. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's something where, it, at the end of the day, as long as the clients are getting a good experience, and that, that's all that matters, Yeah. right? A, a byproduct of that is gonna be, they're happy with you, and they'll send you their neighbors and their, their friends and whatever, and then a byproduct of that is that you would then connect with me, you know, it's like this uh, like this circle of, of things just kind of constantly repeating. So uh, yeah, I'm, I look forward to closing many more deals in the new place. Yeah, our next happy hour, we'll get together probably early April. Yeah. Um, it'll be nice, it'll be the first one with, uh, I might get some, Guaranteed rate. Uh, some swag. Some swag there. Of course, of course. All the swag. swag. <laughs> the swag. Have some Yankees and uh, Yan Yankees and Dodgers swag there, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll make that happen. It'll be a good time. Hopefully uh, the weather will break. We'll start. Uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be nice here. This, uh, this spring market, I feel like, is already upon us. You know, yes. I don't care what the month it is. It, yeah. uh, I know you're slammed, I know I'm slamming, which is a good thing that yeah. a good, you know, situation to be in. We're very blessed. But uh yeah, ready to make it rock, man. It's good stuff. 